Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we are looking at the foreign exchange market. Foreign exchange market is one of the most important markets in our macro economy. It plays a very important role in determining not only just the exchange rate at which two currencies are exchanged for each other, but also has a significant impact on many other macroeconomic variables in our economy, like the price level, real GDP. We'll start with looking at this chart, which is the US dollar to Canadian chart. Here we are looking at the exchange rate for the US dollar in terms of the Canadian dollar. This data is monthly data so it is quite recent it is for this past month of february 2021 now as you can see in this chart that exchange rate between these two currencies is very volatile it is definitely not what we call stable it has been fluctuating quite a lot in this month it reached a high of dollar 26 canadian the low of dollar 25 canadian flexible exchange rate regimes are regimes where the exchange rate is determined by market forces there is no intervention there is no deliberate effort to control the price of that currency in terms of the other and our next question should be why are exchange rates so volatile so the main ingredient for volatility of exchange rates is expectations about future appreciation or depreciation of domestic currency when the currency is expected to appreciate it also affects the relative expected return on the foreign asset and that ends up causing the fluctuation in the exchange rate that we see now, these expectations can be coming from a whole plethora of variables pretty much any variable out there in our macro economy if it's expected to change it can end up affecting the expectation of the relative expected return on our dollar asset and as the relative expected return changes it ends up affecting the current exchange rate today a very recent example is the brexit phenomena the uncertainty around brexit is also accompanied by this continuous depreciation in the pound sterling and in fact on the day that britain voted for brexit the pound sterling actually dropped by more than 9% against the US dollar in the same day. A huge tumble or depreciation for that particular currency. A more recent example is of the US dollar. We see that the US dollar has been expected to weaken as soon as it was clear that it was Biden who was coming into power in the White House and the Biden administration was going to be taking the controls of the economy. Now, this could be tied to expectations about how the Biden administration is going to conduct the management of the economy, management of their trade agreements, trade policies with the rest of the world, capital flows, immigration policies. Again, a whole plethora of macroeconomic variables that can be affected with the new government and therefore affecting the expected relative return on the foreign asset, which is again causing the current value of the dollar to change. Next, we're going to define what the exchange rate market is. So the exchange rate market, remember, is just a platform where buyers and sellers of now various currencies are going to meet and trade these currencies for each other. The price at which these currencies are exchanged one for the other is called the exchange rate. There are two types of exchange rate markets. We have the spot transactions or the forward transactions. In our spot transactions, we have immediate exchange of currencies or more specifically bank deposits happening and the spot exchange rate is determined. And then we have the forward transactions or the forward exchange rate market. Here we're exchanging bank deposits denominated in different type of currencies at some specified future date. And the exchange rate determined in this market will be called the forward exchange rate. Our discussion will be primarily about spot transactions or immediate transactions and therefore focusing primarily on the spot exchange rate. Now recall that exchange rate is simply price of one currency in terms of the other. So when the value of a currency goes up in terms of the other, it's called appreciation. And when the currency falls in value relative to the other currency, it is going to be referred to as depreciation. For example, over here, I have the exchange rate for the euro, which is expressed as how many dollars do we get for each euro or dollar per euro exchange rate. In this case, you can see in 2010, we had the exchange rate at $1.37 and in 2021, it's $1.50. So when you look at this information, you should be now able to ascertain whether the euro has appreciated or depreciated. Now, I could buy the same euro for $1.37 back in the day, and now I have to give up more in order to buy the same one euro. So you can see the value of euro has gone up. And therefore we can conclude the euro has appreciated alternatively we can say that because we are giving up more now for the same euro 
the dollar has or canadian dollar to be specific has depreciated it has lost value we are giving up more for the same unit of the same currency note whenever one currency appreciates the other is going to necessarily depreciate we can also express the exchange rate in the alternative format and that would be euros per canadian dollar so how many euros can we buy with one canadian dollar or how many euros do we give up in order to get one canadian dollar in order to find the alternative exchange rate or the alternative way of expressing the exchange rate between the same two currencies is we simply take the inverse of these numbers so my exchange rate for the canadian dollar in 2010 will become 0.79 euros and for 2021 it's about 0.67 euros so you can see over this time period with the same canadian dollar i'm actually getting less euros so canadian dollar is losing value so either way the conclusion is the same euro has gained value and the canadian dollar has lost value so when we look at this information we should be able to look at whether a specific currency has appreciated or depreciated secondly by how much depreciation has occurred and lastly what is the effect of this appreciation or depreciation appreciation or depreciation of a currency is extremely important from a macroeconomic perspective when a currency gains value in this case euro is gaining value and the dollar is losing value for europeans canadian goods are becoming cheaper and alternatively for domestic residents in canada foreign goods are becoming more expensive when our imports are going to become expensive this is going to feed into our domestic inflation also note that when our goods are now relatively cheaper for foreigners it actually help our domestic exports and with higher exports it can actually stimulate our economic activity and have a positive effect on our real gdp so depreciation while it's making foreign goods more expensive is not necessarily a bad thing however remember it does feed into inflationary pressures at home the exact opposite will happen in the other economy which is using the euro as its domestic currency let's assume it's france for french the canadian goods are becoming cheaper so their imports are now cheaper and feeding into reducing their inflationary pressures whereas their own goods are now more expensive for foreigners or for canadians and they why they are causing their net exports to decline and possibly can have a negative impact on their real gdp that brings to our next question that how are these exchange rates determined one of the most important theories of exchange rate determination is your purchasing power parity theory or the ppp ppp itself is based on law of one price law of one price says that if two goods are identical they are produced in two different countries but they are very low transportation costs and there are no trade barriers no quotas no tariffs then the price of the good should be exactly the same across the globe regardless of which country is producing that particular good we can extend the law of one price to a whole market basket and that gives us the purchasing power parity purchasing power parity says that if we have two identical market baskets and if there are no trade barriers there are very low transportation costs then the price of these market baskets which can be traded across national boundaries will be exactly the same we can understand the purchasing power parity with an example let's assume we have a market basket which costs us 100 dollars in canada and the exact same identical market basket costing us 10000 yen in japan now according to purchasing power parity these prices are exactly the same putting the two prices equal to each other it gives me the exchange rate for the canadian dollar as 100 yen and note all we have done is we put 100 dollars equivalent to 10000 yen and solve for the 1 dollar we can also understand the purchasing power parity through real exchange rate real exchange rate is simply the ratio of the domestic price level to the foreign price level but note the foreign price level will be denominated in the domestic currency so for example let's assume the cost of the market basket is 50 dollars and the cost of the identical market basket in japan is 7500 yen now converting the 7500 yen into canadian dollars will give us 75 dollars and now we'll take the ratio of the two price levels to get the real exchange rate real exchange rate in this case is 50 over 75 so 0.67 note that this exchange rate is quite different from the real exchange rate that i would have gotten in this case where purchasing power parity is holding 
prices are identical across the two countries. Here, our real exchange rate is actually just one because $100 divided by 10,000 yen converted into dollars is again $100 gives you a real exchange rate of one. As soon as you see that the real exchange rate is not equal to one, it's telling you that purchasing power parity is not holding. Prices are not identical across the two countries. In this case, prices are relatively cheaper in Canada than they are in Japan. So whenever our real exchange rate is not equal to one, a, it tells us purchasing power parity does not hold and B, which country is giving us relatively cheaper goods. Whenever prices are not identical, exchange rates will change in a way to take away that advantage or to offset the effect of differences in prices. We can understand this phenomena through another very simple example. In this case, I have the identical market basket, which is costing us $100 in Canada. But the price of the same market basket has gone up in Japan and it's now costing us 11,000 yen. So there is a 10% increase in the price of the market basket in Japan or 10% inflation in Japan. How will it affect the exchange rate? If we assume purchasing power parity holds, the two prices are going to be identical and that gives us the new exchange rate as 110 yen for each dollar. So I can rewrite this exchange rate as 110 yen per dollar. You can see the yen has in this case depreciated. You will have to give up more yen to get the same dollar or you can say the dollar has appreciated because with the same dollar, instead of getting 100 yen as before, now you're getting 110 yen. So whenever we see the price level or inflation going up in the foreign economy, it will cause the domestic currency to appreciate. Or alternatively, if the price level in Japan goes up, the yen will depreciate. Now, purchasing power parity does not really hold in the short run. However, if we look at long-term data, we do see that real exchange rates tend to converge towards one. Remember, when the real exchange rate is one, that means your purchasing power parity holds. And if it is not equal to one, it tells us in which country we can find the good relatively cheaper and what will happen to the currency in the long run, whether it will appreciate or depreciate so that the exchange rate in the long run is again equal to one where the purchasing power parity holds. A contemporary application of purchasing power parity is given to us by Burgernomics or the Big Mac Index. The Big Mac Index works with the same idea of the purchasing power parity that we have an identical good and the price of that good should be identical across all economies or all countries in the globe. Now, the good in this question is your Big Mac. Big Mac is produced by McDonald's and it's pretty much identical regardless of where you're purchasing and consuming it. So for example, we have the Big Mac exchange rate, which will be determined by equating the price of the Big Macs across two different countries. Now, the two countries are USA and China. The Big Macs costs us 20 yuan in China, $5 in USA. By equating the two, we get the Big Mac exchange rate. It's telling us that for every dollar, we can get four yuan, or for every yuan, we only get one fourth of a dollar or 25 cents. The actual exchange rate is not necessarily the same. So when we look at the actual exchange rate, it's giving us $1 gives us 6.4 yuan, or you can say 6.4 yuan per dollar. It is quite different from the Big Mac exchange rate, which is assuming purchasing power parity. This is telling us that yuan is expected to appreciate in the future. Right now, we are getting more yuan for the same dollar, but if the purchasing power parity was to hold, we would get less yuan. So right now, yuan is undervalued by approximately 38%. This difference between the Big Mac exchange rate and the actual exchange rate is called the Big Mac index. It looks at the percentage change between these two numbers and gives us whether a currency is overvalued or undervalued. Big Mac index is primarily calculated against the US dollar for many different type of currencies. So if the Big Mac index is indicating that the currency is undervalued, as in this case, it's indicating to us that goods are relatively cheaper in that economy today. But if purchasing power parity was to hold in the long run, this currency, in this case Yuan, is expected to appreciate. If the Big Mac index is telling you an overvalued currency, in that case, goods are relatively more expensive in that country relative to the United States. And in the long run, that currency will be expected to depreciate against the US dollar.
So why does the purchasing power parity not hold in the short run? Why are currencies either undervalued or overvalued? The answer to that is pretty simple. Are all goods tradable? Do we all exchange all goods and services across countries? Are trade barriers extremely low? Are there no transportation costs of exchanging goods and services across borders? Of course there are. We have an economic system which still relies on a lot of trade barriers, quotas, and transportation costs are extremely high. Longer or larger the distance between two countries, the more difficult it is to transport goods across those countries. So all of these assumptions of purchasing power parity are actually quite rigid and do not hold true in the real world. And that's one reason why the actual exchange rate differs significantly from the purchasing power parity or the real exchange rate of one. Even if the purchasing power parity does not hold in the short run, it gives us a very useful analysis for determining exchange rates in the long run. For behavior of exchange rates in the long run, the simple rule of thumb is that any factor that increases the demand for the domestic goods relative to foreign goods will cause the domestic currency to appreciate and the foreign currency to depreciate. Because foreign goods will only continue to sell if their domestic currency depreciate. Let's now look at some factors that affect the demand for our domestic goods. The first one is your relative price level. This is in line with our purchasing power parity theory that if the domestic price level goes up, it will decrease the demand for our domestic goods because they are now relatively more expensive. With lower demand, we know that the domestic currency is now expected to depreciate and the foreign currency is going to appreciate. See, so Canadian dollar is depreciating or expected to depreciate in the future. Alternatively, we can say if the foreign price level goes up, demand for their goods is going to go down and demand for Canadian goods, which are now relatively cheaper, are going to go up. As the demand for our goods goes up, exchange rate for the Canadian dollar is going to appreciate or is expected to appreciate in the long run. Then we have trade barriers. Higher the level of trade barriers, higher will be the demand for now domestic goods because with trade barriers, domestic residents are forced to buy more of their made in Canada goods. So trade barriers will increase the demand for goods produced at home and cause our domestic currency, in this case, the Canadian dollar to appreciate in the future. And use the Brexit example over here. As soon as we had the vote for Brexit, it was assumed that trade barriers will be higher in Europe. So a lot of that demand that was coming for British goods from Europe is now no longer going to be there and cause the demand for their goods to go down, causing their currency to depreciate in the future. With the expected fall in the value of the British pound, demand for the British pound will fall today and led to that drastic depreciation that we saw in 2016. Next, we have preferences for domestic goods versus foreign goods. So if preferences change, foreigners prefer domestically produced goods or made in Canada goods. That means our exports are rising relative to our imports. Rise in demand for our domestically produced but traded goods causes demand for these goods to go up. And now we know that our domestic currency, Canadian dollar, is expected to appreciate. If, on the other hand, we have a preference for foreign goods relative to domestically produced goods, now demand for imports is going up, which are, remember, foreign produced goods. And this is going to cause the currency to depreciate in the long run. Because the only reason people will buy our goods now is if the exchange rate is relatively lower than before. Lastly, we have changes in productivity. Higher productivity allows us to produce more goods at lower prices. If our domestic economy experiences enhancements in productivity, it pushes the domestic price level down. And with lower prices, we see increase in demand. And here we can see that with higher demand, the Canadian dollar is expected to appreciate. That is, we can get more euros with the same Canadian dollar. Alternatively, if our productivity declines, that means our price level is going to go up, demand will decrease, and our exchange rate will depreciate, or the value of the Canadian dollar will go down vis-a-vis -vis the alternative or the foreign currency.